Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I have a very important message um, today. I, it's going to be some big messages um, to basically just, just reminisce in how holy, how beautiful, how everlasting, and how powerful our God and his son, Jesus Christ, really is. So, um, all those videos that I've been putting out very recently, excuse me, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Um, the Lord has basically just continued to reveal to me that what I'm on to is true. And I'll get to that later. But I wanted to talk about not being distracted. Uh, that's first and foremost. I just want to put it out there that this season right now that we're in is the end. This is it. Okay. Um, I believe that the Lord revealed to me that the year 2020 is that's it. Okay. After that, that's the seven year tri uh, tribulation will start. He, it will. He's confirmed this, confirmed this, confirmed this. Me just saying this, as bold as I'm saying it, is unbelievable. Because I have double, triple, quadruple checked. With the pace, with the speed that everything's moving at the speed of light right now. There, there's no time. There's, it's, it's in act right now. It's in motion. It's, it's happening now. It's taking place now. Um... So I want to talk about just um, the Christians, okay? I want to talk about the Christians. I want to talk about um, the followers of Christ and and our role and just who we are as a whole. First, the first and foremost thing that I want to say is I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a small testimony. My husband had a dream last night. Okay, now my husband, we met when we were 15. We were high school sweethearts. We've been together for a long time. Um, his family introduced me to Christianity. Um, however, I, they, now, like looking back now, they weren't 100%. Like, you know what I mean? But at the time, they were like, the bee's knees to me. I had never seen people that loved God so much in my eyes. So we need to be praying for those people who claim that they're Christians and maybe don't follow through, whatever the case be. Now, my husband took a very dark turn. We got married at 19. And um, since then, he's just kind of really honestly been a damper um, on my walk with the Lord. Um, I'm, I'm just going to be uh, as honest as I can because there's a point to this. Um, I've had people ask me about my husband and ask me certain things. Um, basically, I lead my family as far as um, uh, following the head, and that is God. I lead my family. And I know that sounds strange to most, um, my husband is very masculine. He's very manly. He's very tyrant-like, in a sense. Um, not in a, not necessarily in a bad way. We we butt heads a lot. Let's just say we met each other's match <laughs> when we found each other, because we don't take crap from anyone. Um, but I lead the spiritual side of my family. He's not one hundred percent opposed. Um, but he does what he wants. So he's also just blind. He's so blind. That's where I get so frustrated because I, I've been telling him for, for a long time, but very strictly for these last few months, these last seven months in particular, hardcore, just open your eyes, see what I see. And I tell him, and the more I tell him, the more annoyed he gets. So it, it's frustrating, you know? I've just been praying. 
Because the most you can do is, is lay seeds and then pray for those seeds to prosper. That's just really the best thing you can do. And I've been, I've been binding the, the blind and deaf spirit, binding the blind and deaf spirit. And especially with Americans, I see this like heavily, this blind and deaf spirit. It's so bad. Um, and everybody I talk to that's American, they're just, they're, and it's getting worse. It's just that they're, they're to the point where it's almost at no return. You, you know what I mean? They're almost zombie-like in their, their thought process. Um, they're very programmed. So, um, you know, people get called conspiracy theorists, but that's not... If you look up what conspiracy theorist actually means, it means someone who suspects lawlessness. Yes, if that's what conspiracy means, then yes, I, I suspect lawlessness. I, I absolutely do. It's in the Bible. It says that it's everywhere. It says that few people make it to heaven. So that means majority of people are committing lawlessness. So call me a conspiracy theorist. Um, I tell my husband daily. He gets mad at me when I point out things because he likes to watch movies every night. And that used to be our thing, but I told him I'm, I'm, I'm withdrawing from that because I want to do something better with my time. I don't want to sit down and watch a movie. That's not. I tell him, why don't you join me in Bible study instead? And we butt heads like that. So I've been praying for him. And he really ticked me off last night. <laughs> really bad. So I went in the shower because that's my prayer time. Like, I'm not trying to be fresh or anything when I say this, but... When, when I go in the shower, that's the only time like I'm not with the kids, I'm not with my husband, and there's no noise, all I hear is shh. So it's very peaceful. And I turn on my, I usually play like harp music, like David's harp music. So relaxing, you should try it, you should try it. It's like a spa in its own. And I, I pray and pray and pray. And um, I just prayed this one last time. Just, I was like, God, please. If there's anyone out there, anyone who there's just the slightest possibility that they can make it to heaven, Father, please, please just, just allow the Holy Spirit to pour on them. Last night, my husband had a dream, right? So I was so mad at him this morning. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm going to go into some things I want to talk to Christians about. But um, I was just annoyed. I just, you know, sometimes silence is best. And he's, he said, I had a dream. Because I told him about my daughter's dream. Uh, my daughter's name is Genesis. And I told him Genesis had a dream. And, and he just, like, he'll listen, but, like, it annoys him. Like, you know? So he came to me this morning. He goes, I had a dream. So, like, I was just quiet. Like, you know? So he's like, you don't want to hear it? He's like, well, I'll just tell you. Jesus is coming. So I was like, oh. <laughs> and you know, like, I'm, I'm still a woman. Like, you know, <sighs> my flesh. I was like, oh, really? Oh, well, I had no idea. You know, I'm sarcastic. I, I get like that. So he was like, um, yeah, he was like, I saw these beams of light come down and it was, they were collecting people. And he said that I eventually went up, but he said I was terrified in going up. Like, you know, he said, it was like, I was terrified. He was like, I knew. And I said, well, you know, judgment's waiting still. He's like, I know. He's like, I knew. Right. So. Yeah, that's why I got frustrated because I, I try to scare him in every way. And I'm like, you know, King Nero or N Nero was like the worst ever. And I said, the devil is going to have unadulterated or like just pure evil in the last times. Like, you, like whatever Nero did is going to be a million times worse. And he's like, that doesn't scare me. I was, like, I just want to, I want to smack him. Like, how does that not scare you? But, um, and then he, you know, he tries to uh, bring up the Bible scripture, like, 
God is way more scared. Yes, God's way more scared. That's God is terror, okay? But like like when when you're scared of God, it's like every fabric of your soul scared. But the the pain factor, the mental factor. Anyway, let me get let me get back to what I was talking about. Um God is good, okay? God is good. Just continue to pray over um, your unsaved family members. Do not give up, okay? God said, Jesus said, that if you have faith just as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. A mustard seed is the smallest seed, okay? If you have just that much faith, you can move a mountain. Keep that in mind, okay? Nothing is impossible for God Almighty. Nothing is impossible. So I want to go in and um, I'm going to read a scripture um, for those of you who maybe feel guilty or you're just going through it or you're dealing with, um, you know, repentance issues. Um, I want to talk along the lines of, um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just read off this first. We have Matthew 18 and 21. It says, um, then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I, for, um, and I forgive him? And um, it says, as many as seven times, right? So Jesus said to him, I do, um, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to the king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, which is money. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that they had. And payment, okay, and payment to be made. Where'd that go? Okay. Um, and then it says, so the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of the, of the servant, of that, sorry, uh, of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when the same servant went out, he found some of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and they seized him. He began to choke him saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servants fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went on to put them in prison until the the debt should be paid. When his fellow servants saw that what he had take well, sorry, when they saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that they had that all that had taken place. Oh my gosh! Uh, then his master summoned him and said to him, "You wicked servant! I forgave you of your debt because you pleaded with me." And should not you have mercy on your fellow servant? As you, I had mercy on you. And in anger, the master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So my heavenly father will do that for everyone of you. If you do not forgive your brother from your heart, right? So basically, um, you know, he's just basically talking about how God forgave us, so we need to forgive. There's also another Bible verse that, um, that I believe it's a parable of um, the, the man with the greater debt. Who would be more grateful of their debt being paid? The one who owed less or the one that owed more? Um, and they answered the one who owes more. 
So the moral point is that um, we want to let go of any resentment and forgive for anybody who has done you wrong um, at any point in your life. You want to go ahead and do that now. Um, also, produce fruit. Okay, so we are witnesses of Jesus Christ. We are here for a specific purpose. Um, in the beginning of Genesis, where God says that there's no man yet to till the ground, when you go into that, that actually means work. And if you go into that, work actually means you're working for the Lord. So it's spreading the gospel, just point blank and clear. Um, and when Jesus came and he started to work on the Sabbath, that was showing that he was um, working for the Lord, is what that was supposed to signify. The Lord has just been giving me, just opening my eyes to things. Um, also, I have written down that we need to repent all day long. Okay, so just get into a habit of repenting constantly. Just for anything, any thought, rebuke it. If it's not of God, repent for it. Repent for certain things. Okay? Um, okay. Also, I have here um, regarding faith that when it comes to Jesus Christ and having faith in him, he was a calm during the storm. Okay? He fell asleep on a ship that was being filled up with water. There was a storm like you wouldn't even believe. And he was mad at the people on the ship, his, his disciples, because they had no faith. And um, he was also mad at them when they were trying to cast out a demon and they couldn't do it. So the people came and said, yeah, your disciples were trying to cast out the demon, but they couldn't do it. And he was annoyed. He was angry. He said, how long do I have to be amongst this generation? That doesn't, like, they just don't get it. Okay? So, um, now that I have all of these things out of the way. Okay, so one, um, one more thing regarding my husband. So, when he was talking to me this morning, we kind of had a heart to heart. And I told him, um, the Lord revealed something to me. And like I was expecting him to roll his eyes or, you know, show me some type of, that's usually what happens, you know? Um, but I said, the Lord revealed to me that we need to repent for swearing on any contracts. So if, if we swear at all, um, which was somewhat in my mind, but I didn't think that it was bad, but God revealed to me that anything that goes beyond a yes and a no is of the devil, okay? Because some way, some shape, some form, uh, they will use you in this end time delusion, okay? So um, if you're in a government contract, if you work for the military, if you have any type of ties with CIA, any three-letter agency, all these things then you're going to want to repent for that, okay? Um, oh, and basically the reason why I was saying that is because he told me that he was thinking of that this morning. So that is not, like, that confirmed. So that wasn't him thinking, that was the Holy Spirit. He just doesn't know the voice yet. Because I used to ask him all the time, like, you don't, you don't hear, you don't, you don't get this, this urgency or this, you know, and he tells me no. So that tells me he doesn't know the voice when he said that he was thinking about it. So, um, I'm going to say the next thing because it is a little, um, it's serious. So the next thing I'm going to say, and I want to finish off with something good. Um, the Lord revealed to me that I know what's going to happen with California and I know what's going to happen with the East Coast, but mostly California is what I saw. Um, I don't, I don't want to say what I saw because it doesn't matter. 
it just you know some things it just doesn't matter california and and america and everybody everybody from wherever you're from anybody watching this video right now our nations need to repent we need to get them to repent. We need to get them to listen and hear and heed because the only thing that will save them. But in this case, right now, I know what's going to happen with California. And um, it was planted there from the enemy. The enemy has a plan. It's, it's terrible. That's why I... I something suspicious with California I knew and New York obviously New York too but um it's New York and California but uh California has like the desert and everything else and the and the ancient stuff whereas New York is just pure evil and everything terrible comes out of there but uh so does California that's where um Basically, if you saw my Methuselah video that I just posted a couple hours ago, um, I also did the coordinates of um, the Hollywood, uh, where Hollywood is. I also did the coordinates of um, South Dakota, where the four presidents are on the mountain. Um, I also did the coordinates of just some, like, some major, like, like monuments and stuff. And I got a lot of answers. But I I don't I don't want to go too much into that because right now I just really want to focus on Jesus because I don't think that we're really going to be here for that. Anything that I'm putting out there is really a warning to those who who aren't listening. You know what I mean? So, remember when I was saying that I knew that America paralleled god talks to me and okay so watchman 88 said something a couple hours ago that completely just just completely answered my question that i've been asking god i mean not completely but it it confirmed it verified that i'm not crazy okay so basically watchman 88 was talking about jerusalem and he's talking about america and he said, somebody calls them the, the big Satan and the little Satan. And I was like, well, ain't that something? I was like, what? So I know because America, America is like the one who passes everything. Okay, even even all the decisions are made in New York, even for Jerusalem. The, I don't think anyone knows that. I've already discovered that every single place that's in charge, every single Mason Lodge, all of these things are all Hebrew. They're all connected to Jewish people. Okay, but the bad Jews, there's good Jews and bad Jews. And I, and I said that these Muslims look at Christians and they look at people of Jewish descent or Jewish religion as evil. Now, these Mason lodges, these Freemasons that lead up to Illuminati, which I found out there are 97 levels, okay? Um, they all date back to Solomon. Solomon messed up bad, okay? It's not documented in the Bible that we can tell with our plain eyes, it's something that the Holy Spirit has to reveal to us without getting too deep into the occult and dealing with that side of it. Um, but basically this ex-occultist, ex-Freemason who had been through all this um, and was very high up in the high arcs um, said that he had gone through it all. He said that Solomon started this Star of David and that it is occultic, that it is evil, and that it is ultimately, uh, it's Freemasonry. Um, because if you don't know what Freemasonry is, it has to do with building up, okay? That's what Jesus does too. Nowhere does it say that I've seen that Jesus is a carpenter. He builds up, okay? So, and hence, he talks about rocks, he 
talks about cedar, cedar, cedar trees. He talks about um, like craftsmanship. And that's what the Freemasons talk about. He talks about erection. Um, that's what the Freemasons talk about. And that's why I talk about George Washington, because George Washington is the one who created all of this in America. Okay? So I'm going to show you what I see here. So right here, we have Great Satan, which is a United States of America. And then you have... Where is it? Where's little Satan? Lesser Satan. And God says this, okay? And this is Israel. Where is it? Oh, never mind. It says, ooh, it says Soviet Union. That's interesting. Oh, my goodness. And the, oh, the Lord told me something about, I said something in the winter was going to happen with um, Russia. Uh, I don't know, guys. This is crazy. Okay. Yeah, I was just going off of what Watchman 88 said. But this is amazing. Okay. Now, you, I would encourage you to read Luke 7 down because this, especially for LW, um, the one who had the dream about the 444 and the, the constellation with the fox and the goose, Jesus talks about that. Um, we're not going to 100% understand it, but see, that's, that's why you need to know your Bible because watch this, right? So a greater and a lesser. So um, this... Uh, where is it? So... I think it's it's in the first one where he says that he made a light, a greater light and a lesser light. And there was light and the light was good and the midst to divide the waters and the firmament. It was the sun and the moon. And called da da da. And seed in the firmament for days. This is frustrating. Okay, there we go. So God made two lights, two great lights. You see this? The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. You see this? So God is just, and then he made the stars, right? So we got to see what the stars are. Um, we're, we're learning now. We're learning. I just want you guys to see how the Lord speaks. He speaks through his word. Now, the last thing I wanted to bring up. The last thing I wanted to bring up is that we are in a time where the Jezebel spirit is going to rise. And the Elijah spirit is also going to rise and terminate the Jezebel spirit. Um, this is time to read up on that. Um, we are in we are in the season where we are seeing things before our eyes. If you read Luke seven, that's all prophecy. Um, and then it was Matthew eighteen down. Matthew Matthew's all prophecy. Matthew, I mean everything is, but. As of right now, what's going on right now, I would read those and uh, get caught up and then read about Jezebel and Elijah, okay? Um, she she wanted to, to rule everything and Elijah just, he wouldn't let her have that. So basically, I really believe, now, now I really believe that America is Jerusalem and that they're just hiding it. Um, according to my studies and what I've mapped out, I think that a lot of things have been hidden. And um, as for Canada, Canada and even South America, just there's just a lot. Um, I do believe that God is just gonna reveal everything to us um, in due time. And I know, I know that George Washington is not like, um, 
the time period. I, I know that that doesn't coincide, but there are, when you, like the formula of the Bible is that history repeats itself. And you can find this in Ecclesiastes and all over. And there's warnings that if we forget our history, then we're doomed to repeat it. And that's what's happening. They, they have erased history so that this cycle can keep going. So we need to find out the truth. Now, the Lord is going to expose the darkness because it already says it, okay? I don't even feel like I even have to do all this work. But the Lord blesses those who seek as well, you know? I just, I hate lies. I hate unjust situations, unjust people. And I just want to shout from the, roof, the rooftop uh, the truth. Because I don't feel like my brothers and sisters and myself and my children and all the children around the world should be got anymore, should be taken advantage of or lied to anymore. We have a few months left. If that, maybe a couple days, Jesus could come whenever he wants. It just, it doesn't even matter what patterns I see in the Bible. He can come whenever he wants. You never know if God will be like, go now. You know what I mean? So be prepared. Um, be fruitful and multiply. We need to be telling people about Jesus Christ. Okay? We are witnesses to his testimony. He's done great things in all of our lives. And he's coming back to get us. I love you guys.